Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me on tonight's Egg Whisper Show. My name is Dr. Amy, your host, fertility expert, also known as the ultimate turkey baster. So let's just get started. I just gave it away. The topic of tonight's show, why isn't your IUI working? I get this question asked all the time. Patients are constantly asking me whether they've done IUIs before seeing me or even doing IUIs with me. They often ask, why didn't my IUI work? And so I think it's really important to understand that because if you don't understand that, then you won't know what to do differently next time. So if you're a patient of mine, obviously there are gonna be things that we're gonna do before the IUI. You've heard all of these things before. We're certainly gonna talk about the family size that you want, what your goals are, and whether IUI fits into that based on your age. For example, if you're 37 years old and you want three kids, perhaps starting with IUI at 37 isn't the right thing to do. Preserving your fertility with embryos by freezing them through IVF or egg freezing, that makes more sense. So think about your goals and then see if IUI fits in with those goals. But we're also gonna do things like check your fallopian tubes, make sure they're open, do an ultrasound first before your fertility pill IUI cycle to make sure there isn't a polyp or a fibroid inside your uterus and that there aren't any barriers to implantation. Do a semen analysis. I mean, what a waste of time if you find out on the day of the insemination that the sperm quality is subpar and not. IUI ready. So there are things that we do that like put sperm into a sper sperm boot camp, say that five times, <laughs> to get sperm ready for IUI if the quality is low. I know, I know, you've heard this over and over again. So basically do a tushy check, tubes, uterus, sperm, hormones, and your genetics. So those are important tests to do upfront before you, you do your IUI. So you're not wasting time on potentially doing IUIs that have no chance of working. If for example, your fallopian tubes are blocked. But let's say you've done the tushy check, tubes are clear, so why doesn't IUI work? The answer, mm -hmm. pretty smart aleck answer, because you're human. Yeah, it's really as simple as that. And why don't IUIs work in humans? Well, here's what needs to happen in order for IUI to work, and then you'll see why it doesn't. Number one, the egg that's ovulated needs to get picked up by the fallopian tube, yep. That needs to happen. Number two, the egg and sperm need to meet in the fallopian tube and fertilization needs to happen, that's number three. The embryo then has to travel down the fallopian tube for almost a week until it lands in the uterus. And number five, that embryo needs to implant in the uterus. So at any step during that process, if one of those little things doesn't happen perfectly, then your IUI won't work. It, it's a miracle that IUI even does work or people get pregnant as far as I'm concerned with all these things that need to happen perfectly. But you have to understand those things in order to understand why it doesn't work so that you don't feel like something is terribly wrong with you if let's say your sperm is normal and the tubes are open. So I tell patients that they don't think that there's something terribly wrong with them is that 90% of the time it doesn't work. So you're normal and human. Obviously, there are going to be things that we can do to improve your IUI chances, but let me tell you this. I did a survey of patients as I was talking to them about IUI one day, and I literally asked everyone before I started educating them, and I said, what do you think IUI pregnancy rates are? I would say that the average rate that people quoted me was 50%, and I was like, holy smokes, I need to do a show on this. I need to talk about it and get the word out. I was shocked about it, 50%. I don't want you to be that 41 year old, for example, that thinks your pregnancy rate is 50% when the reality is closer to about 5%. And you made the decision to move forward with IUI based on something that wasn't true or accurate, and then you get really upset that you might have wasted time doing IUI when you might have done other things. So that's why I want to talk about this. Because listen, if that egg doesn't get picked up by the tube, if the sperm doesn't fertilize the egg, if the embryo doesn't travel down the tube, if the embryo doesn't implant, a pregnancy won't occur. So at any step in that process, if one thing doesn't work well, the IUI won't be successful. And certainly I have patients that say like, well, but, but why do you think it didn't work for me? And I'm like, well, any of those five steps, I can't tell how 
you know, things went along the road. There isn't a test to see if the egg got picked up by tube, the tube. I mean, that would be really cool to have some sort of like fluorescent marker on an egg and I could, you know, kind of track it down the fallopian tube and be like, it made it. That would be incredible. Or some sort of early pregnancy test, like right when the embryo landed into the uterus or had some sort of camera in the uterus. Now I'm going way too far with this where you could actually see the embryo coming down the fallopian tube. Sorry, I digress. Getting too excited about all the things that I wish were a reality, but they just aren't. But think about this. If I deliver 50 million sperm cells, just three centimeters away from an egg, that's basically what an IUI is, intrauterine insemination, you would think pregnancy rates would be higher than just like 10 to 15% max. Mm -mm. No, it doesn't matter how good of a turkey baster I am. Human biology definitely has its limitations. You probably didn't know this. In other animals, for example, cows, um, their IUI pregnancy rate, depending on which study you read, is around 50%. Even in mice, depending on the IUI protocol, it's up to 50%. But we're not mice, we're not cows, we're humans. And so that's pretty much why our IUI pregnancy rate is so low for lots of reasons. But here are the things that I want you to consider doing to improve your IUI pregnancy rates. Number one, take fertility pills or ovulation induction medications to increase the number of eggs ovulated. Sometimes patients look at me like, but I don't have an ovulation problem, Amy. I read that these pills help with ovulation and I don't have that problem. And then I talk about things like it's a numbers game. The more eggs you ovulate, it's like a twofer, two chances in one cycle. And then people are like, totally makes sense. Sign me up. Where do I get those pills? <laughs> Number two, make sure you're getting monitored in your cycle. Like how are you going to know that the timing is right of your IUI? If you haven't taken a look at the follicle, make sure it's a sa the right size. Take a trigger shot potentially to time the IUI right so that the egg and uh, sperm are in the same place at the same time. Like that's important. So don't go into things blindly. We're like 2019, almost 2020. This is a great time to ask for monitoring from your doctor if they're not offering you that. And then the other thing is consider a double IUI. And no, that doesn't mean like two IUIs at once. This is how I do that. For example, if today is Wednesday and I think that I'm gonna give you a trigger shot tonight, then I can do one IUI on Thursday, anytime that's convenient for you, and one IUI on Friday morning. So those are the kinds of strategies that I use with my patients to give them the highest IUI pregnancy rate if possible. Another thing to consider doing, sperm and egg friend egg friendly supplements for both of you. We talk to women about taking prenatal vitamins, really important, but there are also other supplements like CoQ10. And for guys, high dose antioxidants can sometimes help with sperm quality too, depending on your situation. Here are some more things that you can do. I hear stories all the time from patients all over the world who tell me how difficult their IUIs were. And I ask simple things like, well, did you have a full bladder for your IUI? Were you offered a Valium 30 minutes before? Was your IUI done under ultrasound guidance? So if you're like looking between your legs and you have your doctor all flustered with sweat dripping down their head because they can't find your cervix, well, recommend another speculum size, waiting for your bladder to fill up. You know, the uterus is kind of like a lawn chair. So as the bladder fills up, it just straightens out and makes it super easy to get the catheter in. And if you're in a clinic setting, there's ultrasounds everywhere. So just plop on an abdominal ultrasound probe, your doctor will see exactly where they need to go. So ask for those things. Say, hey, can you write me a prescription for Valium? Should I have a, my bladder full before I come in? And number three, will you do this under ultrasound guidance? The other thing I offer patients is taking progesterone after IUI. Progesterone, what does it stand for? Promote pregnancy, gestation, progesterone. Only makes sense. You've probably heard my analogy here before that progesterone to me is like water to a marathon runner. We don't tell a marathon runner to finish that race and then take water. We want to feed that, or not feed, we want to give the marathon runner water throughout their race. And the other thing that you can do to improve your pregnancy rates, I'm just kidding, probably won't improve your pregnancy rates, but make you feel like you're more educated about the process is watch my show on how to prepare for IUI. So in that show, I give you lots of details about my protocols for ovulation induction as well. So now here are some common IUI myths. Myth one, and I promise you that there are probably a lot of these myths that you thought might be true, but now we're gonna call them myths and then you'll be like, aha moment, now I know what I need to know before I decide to do IUI. So myth one, I only get three tries. That's not true, but this is the thing. If something hasn't worked after three or four tries, it's really time to reevaluate what you're doing, what you've learned from it, what your diagnosis is, and whether it makes sense to keep going. I have certainly helped people get pregnant in their fourth IUI, their sixth IUI, even their ninth 
identify you why. And maybe I've gone even a little further than that for personal reasons for that individual patient. Super important to talk to your doctor about what your goals are and whether it makes sense to continue and what you've learned from the process and what you can do to make things even better that are in your control. Myth two. IUI takes only the good sperm and puts it at the top of the uterus. I wish that that was true. I mean, I wish that there was such a filter like that. I mean, what we do is we process the sperm, we separate the semen out from the sperm cells, and we deliver as many of the modal sperm cells as possible. But you've probably heard of a term called morphology. So sperm morphology has to do with the shape of the sperm. We can't select out the bad shaped sperm from the good shaped sperm. If the sperm is moving and alive, we can certainly just put all the swimmers up there. And certainly you are taking the good sperm and putting it up there, but you're not just taking the good sperm. You're basically taking all the sperm that is moving and, and you're delivering it at the top of the uterus. So there isn't that type of selection process involved through IUI that might, some people might think that there is. Here's another one. Number three, sperm quality doesn't matter when doing IUI. It does. I mean, sperm quality really does matter. I mean, you need to have a certain percent motility, a certain amount moving in the right direction, and a certain count to make IUI worth your while. So talk to your doctor about what their personal cutoffs are and see if IUI is still right for you. And if the IUI, uh, let's say, if the sample is low, then consider seeing a urologist, consider a sperm DNA fragmentation test to make sure that IUI is the right thing for you if the parameters are slightly lower, and maybe even an anti-sperm antibody test to see if maybe one of the reasons good sperm isn't getting into the egg because the sperm have antibodies bound to their heads, which might make fertilization more difficult. Here's another uh, IUI myth, and uh, I hear this all the time, that they'll do IUI and the sperm is going to fall out. So this is the thing. I mean, I can't put a cork in the cervix after the IUI, and certainly there's some level of gravity of things coming out, um, and I, I should discover or I should invent some sort of quirk, but um, at the end of the day, I can't do that. So I have my patients lie down for 10 minutes, and certainly there are some that want to lie down more, so that's something to talk to your doctor about if you have the flexibility to do that. And here are some more myths. Um, I have patients that tell me, can you direct the sperm over to the side that's ovulating? And, and we really can't do that. See, at the tip of the catheter, there are two holes on either side, and when you push the end of the syringe, sperm just comes out, and you, you know, the cavity is so small, we don't have the ability to push it into one side or the other. Another myth is that you can spin sperm for gender. No, you can't. There's a company that claims they can, claims that they can 50% of the time, you know. Um, so no, spinning sperm for gender is actually not a thing unless you go to another country. Okay, another thing, a myth, is that you should abstain leading up to the IUI and then after the IUI. I'm telling you people, having sex is not dangerous. It is not gonna harm your IUI chances. You don't need to abstain. And then people confuse the instructions that they got from the semen analysis with the instructions for the IUI. But important again, talk to your doctor. Your doctor knows your body and your husband's sperm analysis, and it doesn't have to be a husband, your boyfriend, <laughs> fiance, whatever, um, sperm donor, uh, analysis better than uh, anyone else. Because there are some situations where I actually tell people, not uh, not to have sex for a certain number of days before the IUI. And other, most people, I would say, if you have a good sperm count, to have sex every other day leading up to the IUI. And I always tell patients at the follicle check whether I want them to have sex or not. And then after the IUI, if the sperm count's um, on the lower side, then I do recommend intercourse. Otherwise, I say sex just for fun. So that's my show, you guys. You're probably wondering, what is this picture? These are my crotchless pants, also known as the Egg Whisper Fertility Pants. So these are pants that my patients get in my office when they want to do IUI, and you can see that's my hand, and that's a speculum, and you don't see any other parts. Because who wants to be exposed with their legs hanging out, doing IUI, when you can be all snuggly and warm in these pants, right? I designed them for my patients thinking of their comfort. So I hope you guys learned a lot about why your IUI isn't working, and I really hope your IUI does work. I have lots of patients over the last 12 years who've done IUI, and it's definitely worked for them, but I've also had so many patients that it didn't. So I'm hoping that all the tips that I shared with you on tonight's show will be helpful for you no matter where you live. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great night. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor.